from the Tie Cats Audio Network. This is Tie Cats Today with Louis Butko. Yes, it is Tie Cats Today for a Thursday, August the fourth, twenty twenty-two. Louis Butko here on the Tie Cats Audio Network. Coming up on today's show, we'll be hearing from the head coach and president of football operations, Orlando Steinauer, as we normally do here. Uh, we're going to show the long snapper. A little bit of love. Yeah, you're going to hear from Gordon White. Haven't had a chance to catch up with him this season. And we'll give you a little bit of background on, on why we're talking to him. And uh, he's, he's definitely a fascinating guy. Have you ever seen our social media pages or channels on Instagram or, or, or Twitter or TikTok? Uh, Gordon White's always front and center. The guy loves the camera, and uh, we decided to put him on the podium today. And he gave some really insightful things. Um, you know, Obviously, Aaron Crawford was such a huge part of... Uh, of this team for so long. Big shoes to fill. So I asked him uh, about that. So we'll hear from him coming up. And uh, later on in the show, we'll be joined by Coach Sal, John Salavantis, to get his thoughts on the Ticats, uh, again, as they get set for their Week 9 matchup against the Toronto Argonauts. For more on that, let's hear from the head coach and president of football operations. Here is Orlando Steinauer. Yeah, I thought uh, we, we had one day that we probably collectively would want to uh... – well, you know, every 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 day you go through something, you you actually grow through it. So, you know, I'm not even going to say uh, take anything back. I just uh, it wasn't to our level, but I think um, you know today we practiced to our standards and we we're on and off the field, um, wanted to be fresh. So, uh, I thought it was a great work day. I think it's different. I think points of the year are different when you go into those type of things and. Uh, you know, for us, you know, we, we just kind of go with it as the season goes. And then also, uh, you know, the, your health status also has something to do with it. So to say it's not important would be an understatement. Um, but you can't always control those type of things. So these, there's still an element of need to get some work done, too. Yeah, you know, JG is going to be JG. He's going to, you know, he's going to cause people fits. They're going to move him around and just the same way we did. And, uh, you know, he's, he's sought after because of uh, his production. And so, uh, yeah, we know we've got our hands full and, you know, but at the same time, we have to, we got to try to play our game the best we can. But, you know, are we aware that uh, he's able to disrupt it? But I, I would credit their whole, all their front four. I think that they, they get after people and, uh, well, yeah, we'll definitely have our hands full, but, you know, <laughs> we'll get lots of practice at it playing Toronto. Yeah, I mean, Speedy was a, a focal point of this organization for a long time. You know, he's a future Hall of Famer, uh, got a lot of love for, for Brandon and, you know, as a person. And, and, of course, what he does on the field speaks for itself. So uh, the fact that he's continuing his career, uh, that's all outstanding. And, you know, he's still he can still score from anywhere on the field. And they're using him in a return game now. So, yeah, they're, you know, they're gonna, we'll have our hands full. But, um, you know, we, we definitely know what we're up against. But we can't focus. It's just like every week, Steve. we got to focus on ourselves and, and not so much what the other opponent is doing or what they may do. That is the head coach and president of football ops, Orlando Steinauer, speaking after practice today. And you can always catch full scrums available at TyCats.ca, where you can hear Coach O's full comments from today. you also hear from Jamal Roll. And you'll be able to see this next guy, Gordon White. And Gordon White in last week's game against the Alouettes recorded a special teams tackle. You might think, okay, he's on special teams. A lot of guys in the CFL, some long snappers don't make tackles. In fact, his six special teams tackles, or his five special teams tackles, excuse me, that he has this season, yes, five, that puts him in 18th place in the CFL right now. By the way, Mike Domagall has four tackles. I, I brought that up with somebody around, and that not a stat you want to see. Nice to know we can do it, uh, but you know you don't want to see your 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 punter with four tackles. But Gordon White plays the game with an edge, and you can tell when he's out there. He's a ball of energy, and uh, we ended up catching up with him today after practice. And I, I, he does play a really physical game, so I had to ask: Does he see himself as a long snapper or a linebacker? And I posed the question to him. I see myself as a long snapper, but. I want to differentiate myself from the other long snappers by making tackles and being versatile. Like even in practice, I'm on all the show teams and I get my reps on offense, defense, wherever I can. So I just like to do more than just like I like I, I'm, I'm a long snapper, but I don't like to be tagged as a long snapper. I like to do, be able to do more than that. Yeah, he loves that. There's some things he doesn't let me do, but 
he loves like I had a meeting with the other day and he's just like never change like I love your energy that's why you're here and just obviously be smart you know we don't need you getting hurt but yeah it's gonna be a it's gonna be a test for sure but even the guys we brought in who have been here in the past like for training camp and stuff like it's kind of just that next man up mentality um they're all ready to go and like just the special teams unit we have and like the culture we have we like embrace it a lot so every guy that wants to come up next or is like next up they come in and are passionate about it too and are like i'm ready to fill that role of especially a guy like curtis newton that was a big loss but because he was like a key to our, yeah he was he was he was our big big time like one leader so yeah like when i came in and drafted in 2019 crawford was a huge like like help to have going into camp because he's been doing it for so many years so he kind of set the table and like what I need to do to become the starting guy kind of thing um and like he he was it, it was a big step especially looking at the people outside like fans and stuff who embraced him like when they came to me they're like oh are you here to take Crawford's spot and I'm like like technically I guess but you know not really I'm just you know trying to fill the shoes that they're letting me fill but um, yeah, it was, it was, it's huge taking over Crawford's spot and it's kind of just wanting to keep that role alive as like, especially just not on the field, outside of the field, he did a lot, so. That is Gordon White, the long snapper of the Hamilton Tiger Cats, getting to know him a little bit, talking about filling the shoes of a, a guy like Aaron Crawford, who is off in Calgary now, but uh, also, special teams is going to be a position group to watch. Y- you lost Nick Cross earlier this season. Uh, you know, coach provided an update a little bit as uh, we don't know this, the the full status of Curtis Newton, but you heard you heard Gordon talk about it there. I mean, he is the leader on that group. They're confident in Jared Beeksma as they should be. You know, they they drafted him for a reason. Uh, but yeah, the the special teams group going to be one to watch. And Craig Butler's uh, coverage team, and we talked about that with Coach O too. And and you know, Speedy back there returning kicks. He's a dangerous guy. Uh, so it'll be a position group to watch for sure, and Gordon White at the center of it as the long snapper. And a reminder, you go to full scrums available at Ticats.ca. All right, for more on Saturday's game and looking at what the Ticats have been up to this week, very pleased now to be joined by Coach Sal, John Salavantis. And uh, Coach, I want you to put your coaching hat on for me. Uh, easy for you to do. But it, it, if you were in this situation preparing for – a team you're going to see four times in the next five weeks. How do you even start? What do you do? Well, you know, it's a very difficult situation. I think uh, uh, you got 240 minutes when you finish that fourth game that you've been on the field against the same team. Now, you know, to me, what you want to do uh, in game one, throw the kitchen sink at them. Give them, give them everything that, that you can possibly give them. Uh, and and, uh, see how that works out. And then in the second game, what you want to do is you want to throw out those things that didn't work and and concentrate and focus on the things that that did work. And and I would also, uh, because it's back-to-back within six uh, days, I would cut way down on the time on the field. Uh, Give your players the opportunity to study film and to work in the classroom as much as you can. Uh, and and conserve some energy uh, and really uh, refocus on the film because the first time through a film, a coach will never see everything that's on that film. So you go through it several times in order to to gain that insight that you need uh, for that second ball game. Well, they got to get through the first and they are going to Toronto on Saturday. When you look at their last three games, uh, similar games in the sense that yes, they, they, they won, uh, the, the two at home. Right. Uh, but, and even that one in BC was a competitive game. How much momentum do you think this team can use from those three games moving forward? I think it was a, a huge uplift, uh, to the team. Uh, the BC game was a winnable ball game. They did not uh, accomplish that there. They came back home and won a couple of ball games at home. So uh, to me, you know, it, it's it's an upswing for the team right now. I, I think this is very important, this game uh, against Toronto. Last year, they lost a series to Toronto, but beat them uh, in the uh, final outcome 
uh, for the position, uh, you know, uh, yep. uh, that they got in, in the uh, playoffs. But uh, to me, th this is going to be one of those games where you, you really have to concentrate on taking care of your players. The, 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 especially now with the heat and humidity uh, that's in the area. If you wear your players down, today and tomorrow are probably the most important days leading up to this ball game uh, for the players to hydrate and, and get themselves in a physical position uh, to play a very uh, tough football game. Yeah, I, I agree. And uh, just seeing out there in the water, people and the, the athletic training staff are, uh, are the MVPs today with all the water and Gatorade uh, that they're handing out. Uh, when you look at this offense, it, it seems like it's one or two big plays away from really us not having to talk about the offense anymore. How do you get everything on track right now to, to, to really, I, I want to say just beat teams because they haven't really done that this season. They haven't gone out and, and, and beat teams. And I, I'd love to see them do it against the Argos, but how do, how do this, how does that all need to click together? Well, I, I think it's beginning to come together. Uh, I'd like the idea of the two quarterbacks, the way they used them uh, in the last ball game. That worked out for them. I've never been a proponent of, of being a two quarterback system, but at the same time, uh, you see the difference when you put the, uh, the second quarterback in. And, and as long as that's positive, I think you can continue to do that. Uh, to uh, go back to what, uh, the idea of, of uh, which play in a game wins the ball game, which play changes the ball game, that you never know. So you have to play every play. And when you look at the turnover ratio, uh, you're looking at the, the bottom two teams in the league. Uh, uh, Hamilton's got minus 12 in the turnover ratio, but Toronto's right behind him at minus 10. So it's going to be one of those games where one play could turn the entire ball game. Whether that comes from offense, defense, or special teams, you'll never know. So it, to me, it's it's one of those games where you have to play every play uh, exceedingly well. Well, the, the secondary was, I thought, the, the best position group on the football field uh, on Thursday against Montreal. Uh, and, and that helped a lot with the return of, of Kario Brooks. When you look at his impact, it was immediate. Uh, but how good can that secondary be? And when you talk about those big plays, do you feel like they need one of those big plays, maybe a big interception or a, a pick six to really set the tone here? Well, they, they do. And, and uh, with Simone Lawrence coming back, that secondary gets that much better uh, for this ball game. You talked about Brooks making a, a impact right away. Lawrence will make an impact in this ball game. Now, this is a game where there's going to be a lot of chirping going on on the field. We know that. And, and Lawrence is great at it. But what they have to do is the, the senior players, the veteran players on this ball club, have to control their guys on the field and their emotions on the field. Let Simone Lawrence lead the way with the way he talks to the opponents, but always walk away. Because that one play we talk about could come on a penalty. So you don't want that to happen to your football team. Like it did for the Argos on Sunday against the Red Blacks, extending the drive, uh, which the Red Blacks used to, to get the, uh, the touchdown that really put the game away. Uh, you mentioned uh, discipline. Obviously, that's going to be key. But there's a couple of familiar faces we'll be uh, seeing in Toronto. Uh, and that's uh, one Speedy B and, and two Jagarrett Davis. Uh, as on the offensive line, what, what do you think Travis Vorncall and Brandon Rebenberg and, and he, I guess not the center, but what do you think those guys can take from lining up against Jagera Davis so many times in practices uh, the last couple of seasons? Well, I, I think number one with Jagera Davis, uh, the way he approaches the game, he, at times he looks like, uh, you know, uh, a Jim Brown where he, he kind of staggers back to the huddle and kind of uh, he's playing his own rhythm in his own head. He's doing things, you know, don't let that take away from your focus on the guy. The guy is a player. The guy can beat you uh, on the line of scrimmage. So you've got to really focus on your uh, ability to stay in front of that guy. You, you, know, you don't have to stop him at the line of scrimmage. You have to stay between he and the quarterback and, and make sure 
that whether he lines up over the guard or lines up at the defensive end position, that you know where he is and concentrate on him. Now he's got other guys around him that are very good. So that makes it that much more difficult for this game. But those two tackles especially have to keep him off the quarterback. Yeah. I mean, this, this is a game, like you said, 240 minutes. Uh, there's a lot of plays in the trenches uh, between these two teams. So those, those lines will be very familiar on both sides. I want to finish with special teams here because you, you don't want to see your kicker show up on the stat sheet with, uh, with three tackles. Uh, I found out today, he said he thought he had four tackles, but only got credit for three, but uh, Mike Domagala has been in a weird spot the last couple of seasons. He was the, you know, the, the go-to place kicker, a field goals was tr- trusted on him. He had a, an interesting year last year. Now he's the, the lead punter out kicking John Ryan, certainly someone who's going to be in the Canadian football hall of fame. Uh, what do you take on from Mike Domagala and, and, and how the players rally around uh, a, a, their guy, a kicker? Well, you know, it, it's difficult to uh, be a kicker in, in any league because the one play comes down to, you know, the focus is right on you. Uh, on all other plays, the focus is, is widespread. But when you're the kicker or the punter, it's all on you. And I thought Domagala has done a good job punting the ball uh, down the field. But uh, they have to get their cover team, and that's Coach Butler's group. They have to get that cover team straightened out to where uh, Speedy B, and you mentioned him, when Brandon Banks is back there, anything can happen on a special team. So you have to really run your lanes. Don't get out of your lanes. Stay in your lanes and, and place the ball. Domagala has got to place the ball expertly in this ball game. Yeah, it should be a good one. Coach, thank you for doing this. Appreciate it as always. All right, Louie. Talk to you again soon. My thanks to Coach Sal for joining me today. And my thanks to you because you could not do the show without your support. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I'll make sure to like and subscribe so you never miss an episode. Or you can hit me up on Twitter with your comments and feedback at Louie B underscore TV. That's it for us today. We are back tomorrow with the depth chart in our hands from walkthrough. And we'll get you set for Saturday's game right here on Cats today. I'm Louis Butko, hoping you have a great day. Tiecast today can be heard every weekday, and we would like to hear from you. Email us at gameday at tiecats.ca. Have a question or an opinion? We want to hear it. That's gameday at tiecats.ca. Subscribe to the Tiecats Audio Network on Spotify or wherever you get your podcasts.